Vaxi's musical podcast. Resistance is useless. I have never been shy about admitting that, in my opinion, one of the greatest, if not the greatest front men that I've ever seen live was Angelo Moore of the band Fishbone. This is a band that I've seen a bunch of times. I've seen them in small clubs that could barely squeeze in more than 100 people. I've seen them in 20,000-seat arenas. I've seen them in outdoor amphitheaters, all kinds of venues of all kinds of sizes. And in my opinion, there has never been a band that could come anywhere close to what Fishbone was like live in their prime. And the lead instigator of that band and continues to be their lead singer, Angelo Moore. Fishbone was formed in Los Angeles in 1979, a band that magically combined ska, funk, metal, soul, and reggae with an energy that would leave you exhausted and in a total flop sweat. It was a band that would merge songs that were just pure electrifying fun with songs that were soaked in a blistering rage of social consciousness, songs dealing with racism, busing, segregation, addiction, and a whole lot more. In short, they were the greatest live band that I have ever seen, and that is an opinion that has not changed since the first time I saw them 39 years ago. There have been a lot of changes to Fishbone over the years, but Angelo Moore and bass player Norwood Fisher have remained in place since the beginning, cranking out tremendous records like Truth and Soul from 1988 or The Reality of My Surroundings in 1999, and even their self-titled EP that they released last year, produced by Fat Mike from the band No FX their first recordings in more than nine years. This is a band that should have been the biggest band in the world. Unfortunately, between a few internal issues and a record company or two that simply didn't know how to market a band like this, Fishbone never fully got the full attention that they absolutely deserved. But that certainly never deterred Fishbone, and it certainly hasn't deterred Angelo Moore. Whether he's performing with his incredible band, The Brand New Step, or his alter ego, Dr. Mad Vibe, Angelo has spent the last 41 years stubbornly and relentlessly performing, writing, and crushing live performances in a way that most human beings are totally incapable of. This is a guy who has collaborated with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Jane's Addiction, Bad Brains, Thelonious Monster, Gwen Stefani, Jerry Cantrell, and many, many more. Angelo is about to release the latest brand new Step album featuring another incredible collaboration with Dell the Funky Homo Sapien. The new song, Superstar, is absolutely fantastic. And so wasn't their 2020 collaboration, Rebellion, which I think is one of the best songs that Angelo has released in a long, long time. Now, the last time I spoke to Angelo, he was riding a train surrounded by a bunch of other travelers. This time, I spoke to him at Fat Mike's Punk Rock Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada. And though I could kick myself for not having this interview on video, it is always a pleasure to welcome back Angelo Moore from Fishbone and the Brand New Step. My guest today on Baxi's Musical Podcast. Hey, there we go. All right, man. We on and cracking. We <laughs> Finally. Finally. We made it. Yes. It's good to have you back. Yeah, man. For sure. For sure, man. We talked, um, I think it was almost about a year ago. <laughs> you were on a train, and I don't even know where you're going, but we had a conversation while you were on the train. So, it's finally good to see you in, in between stops at <laughs> and at the, the Punk Rock Museum. That's very cool. I, I assume that the microwave hey, and the man. coffee machine are not part of the uh, displays. No, nah, man. They just, I'm in the back. <laughs> Here's what some of the shit looks like. Look at this here. This is the part where I come by and I say, fuck Henry Rollins. <laughs> there you go. There's the there's Henry Rollins. You can go say, fuck you, Henry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I get everybody to say that, too. <laughs> I get them all to say that. I got about three recordings of get me getting everybody to say, fuck you, him. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't been to Las Vegas in, I don't know, about 10 years. I mean, the, the museum gets great reviews. Is there like a whole fishbone wing going in there or what's, uh, what's. No, I got my picture upstairs. I'm, 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 you see me around here a little bit here and there, <laughs> but I've been doing the whole tour guide thing. Oh, look at that fine ass bitch right there. <laughs> Good Lord, I didn't know she was up there. <laughs> yeah, man. So sometimes they'll have me go in here and play that drum set yeah. as a part of the exhibit, you know. And uh, I come in here and I just look at the different flyers and I talk about, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my experience with some of this shit. If I was there, what I remember seeing, 
<laughs> you certainly go back to a lot of it. I mean, when the when the band started in 1979, I mean that was that was the kind of the thick of everything on the on the West Coast. Yep, in the early 80s. <laughs> Look at that. See, Nashville Pussy did a remake of that poster. Look at that. That's L7. L7. That's a piece of work right there. Look at that. Oh, yeah, oh, man. That's, that's beautiful. And then they got the dick shirt fucking section. <laughs> <laughs> With the old Williams. They got the cross. They got everybody. I'm trying to find my picture. Where the fuck is my picture? It's somewhere around here. They got me somewhere in here, man. I done ran past it a couple times. <laughs> Almost every time I go through here, I see different shit. Yeah. I almost feel like I don't have to pay to go in now. Hey, man, you're seeing it now, but you're seeing <laughs> it go by. You can't stop <laughs> up and look at it. But, you know, but not everybody gets Angelo Moore as their tour guide to the uh, the punk rock museum. I feel I feel very blessed today. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I tell them about it, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Look, they got this naked girl up here on stage. Look at that. I'll be damned. Now, you, well, you, you, I assume that you weren't at that show. I wasn't there. <laughs> but I can imagine it happening. <laughs> this picture of Fat Mike. That is a I did piece. cocaine on a whole bus night. Look, look, here <laughs> HR and Keith Morris. Wow. Very cool. You know, that I'm is... up in here somewhere. Where the fuck am I? Somebody pointed me out. And I was like, oh, there I go right there. Look at that. Uh-huh. I'm not, and that's only just one little picture. <laughs> oh, here we are. Here I am with one of the Go Go's. Hey, somebody. Hey, man, what's happening? Good, man. How you doing? Good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Didn't man. I talk to you last night at? at uh... No, no, I wasn't here. Oh, okay. At uh, uh, what's the name of that bar over there? They got they got served this drink called I Asked You Double Down. <laughs> there goes me and the girl from the Go Go's. Yeah, Jane from the Go Go's. Jane, Jane, Jane Wyland. Yeah. How about yeah, that? that's when I have my my Pee Wee Herman special. <laughs> that was the first punk rock album I ever bought with the Go Go's. It's the Go Go's, right? And, and it's funny, mom bought it for me. She didn't even know it. Right, right. <laughs> oh my God, I used to have a crush on her, texting the horse heads. Good God, man, I go to every one of her shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah. awesome. So to write the brand new step, right? I know we're going to talk about the brand new step. We are going to talk about the brand new step. Actually, uh, in fact, here's my copy the, of uh, Centuries of Heat right here, right there. Right there on the uh, oh, on the screen. Oh yeah. Oh, see, that's real good, dude. I love I love this record. Yeah, my I, dad. Hold on for a second. This. Here, I made it. Wow. I'm glad you made it. This is my daughter. <laughs> Hello. This how is, are you? This is this is um Mike. Yeah. This is Mike. <laughs> What's happening, Mike? And I'm on a podcast with Mike right yeah. now. Yeah. Yes. I didn't realize we're gonna oh, get to see podcast. the whole family. This is perfect. Yeah, you get to meet the whole family and everything, man. We know oh, she's <laughs> she's gonna be working here pretty soon. So yeah. <laughs> right okay so yeah man brand new step it's a definitely a different genre from the place that i'm in now vastly different yeah you know there's, it's uh you know it's a disco ball project man disco ball baby there's there's certainly some vague similarities between what brand new step is and what fishbone used to be but there's some what's I, going on what's up okay i'm sorry man go ahead <laughs> no i mean there's some real stark differences between fishbone and brand new step and i think one of the things that we talked about before and i think it's i think it's the thing that i like the most about it is is it's really kind of shining a light on who angelo moore is it's like you know there's creativity beyond what fishbone accomplished during their their career and this is you man this is you know i i hear the music and and the the songs that you've done with uh del the funky Homo sapien are, are fantastic. Oh, superstar. Yeah. Superstar. That's, that's a yeah. Tell me about uh there's a new record uh, allegedly coming out. Uh with the brand. Okay, so okay. I have I put together a compilation of brand new step songs, man. Like about 26 of them. And I put them on, I put them on the uh thumb drive. I got a thumb drive. Damn, I wish I had the shit to show you, man. I got these thumb drive, credit card thumb drives, right? And you flip the little chip out on the end and all the music is in there. Oh, right. Cool. So it's like about 20, it's like 26 brand new step songs. I got one card with vocals. I got one where it's just instrumental. So you could do like karaoke and and uh, you know, karaoke and just make remixes with it, you know, the brand new step stuff, because brand new step is good for doing remixes, man. It's like it's dance music. Yeah. It's like a lot of it's electronic dance music. I mean, it has a lot of real instruments, of course, but it, it that's that's the genre that it leans more toward. Definitely, I think um, you know one of the songs you did a, a while back that I think is maybe one of the best songs you've done in a long, long time 
is Rebellion. I just think that is such a great freaking song. It's a rebellion. Oh, <laughs> it ain't a truce. <laughs> But it's great. But it's great. Drinking though. orange juice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. Let me ask you, the, uh, though, about this. I mean, how far back did these songs go? I mean, these, it's, it's, been, it's been 2017 since, the, since you know, Centuries of Heat came out. Man, well, brand new step. What, you mean like how long have we been together, you mean? No, no, no. Just, just this group of songs. Is this, is this, are these songs that have been around for the entire. These length of it or how how does that work well they yeah they've been around the entire length you know the um the release that i've got with the thumb drive you know and, and all the all the songs man it's like it's our it's almost the entire catalog that's There's probably right. a couple probably a couple of songs missing in there but it's a lot of good music man yeah and you get a greeting card with it that says <laughs> It's got my face on there. So I got sure. the greeting cards, the Angelo Moore, the brand new step, you know, and then you got these stickers with my art pieces on there and QR codes. So you run your phone over that QR code, man, and you could, it'll take you to my performance art pieces that I do uh, with the art that I've been creating called uh, my art project called Avant Presidents and Avant Icons. You know, it's different than when you're in a band with a bunch of guys you've been playing with since the age of 14, where you, know, you have to kind of compromise a little bit because everyone's kind of got their own, you know, their own agenda, their own motivations in a band. With Brand New Step, creatively, though, I mean, I got to believe that this is, you just got to be so grateful to have the opportunity to be able to do this. Hey, man, that's why I call it, that's why it's called the Brand New Step. <laughs> Chris Jensen, uh, the guy who put it together. Yeah. <laughs> He thought of the name, the brand new step. He called up the name Angelo Moore, the brand new step, because it's a brand new step for me. The brand new step for me musically, you know, and, and the the uh like a lot of the lyrical content and attitude is more on a spiritual tip. It's a little more kumbaya, man. You know, fishbone, you got a lot of darkness happening. You do. Which is which is, <laughs> which is good, you know. Yeah. But uh with this. I get to be a little more, I get to do some more of that, you know. <laughs> and we got videos. And real good ones, too. And good ones, man. They really put it together, man. Chris Jensen and Jim Greer. I, I just read that uh, you guys are going to be at South by Southwest in, in March. That's uh, Are you planning a tour with all this, or is this just like a, uh, a, a yeah, one-off so thing? So we're going to plan a tour. So the, so the objective is is to have it in March. That's when South by Southwest is. Come out there on the 12th. 13th, we started the Paper Tiger in Austin. I think it's Austin or maybe Houston or something's called a Paper Tiger. And then we're going to fill up the rest of those dates. South by Southwest is on the 16th and 17th, I believe, or maybe the 15th, 16th, and 17th. You know, it's so going to stay out there yeah. and, and do that. So it's going to be from like the 12th through to the 18th is what we're trying to make happen. So last November, Fishbone was on tour or about to go on tour uh with jizza from wu-tang which sounds pretty freaking, freaking fantastic. i know dude it would have been off the hook yeah so what and it, you know supposed to be uh you know rescheduled in the in the spring so you know what happened there and and is there is there a chance that that may actually happen down the road well it got first of all it got canceled because of um lack of pre-sale tickets which is the stupidest thing ever you don't cancel a fucking tour just because of pre-sale tickets, man. You, you got to realize that a lot of hip hop and punk rock cultures, they're going to go to the door. Sure. A lot of people ain't sitting up on the computer and pre-ordering shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least not for that type of tour that we were going to be on. So I don't know. The promoters got scared and they thought it's not enough pre-orders. Let me cancel it. But they just weren't thinking about the walk up, man, which I is which is like it's what people do. They walk up too. I mean, when I read about it, I thought, why would they cancel it? And, and I mean, unless, you know, somebody got sick or, you know, whatever. But for pre-sale tickets for a show like that, I mean, if people realize what's going to happen, they're just going to go because it's Fishbone and Jizza. <laughs> and you guys were going to play Truth and Soul uh, in its entirety, which is, you know, freaking fantastic. So is, is there any chance that that could be regenerated could could that well, I, still happen I, don't, I really don't know man uh, the band is going on a hiatus for a year yeah I'm putting them on hiatus for a year so i could get into my my other projects everybody could kind of re we can we need to rethink 
how we're going to approach the whole business and, and reason of why we do it, which is, which is very important. I don't want to, you know, just focus on, uh, on that tour. Cause you've done a lot of other great stuff. Well, we did a lot of other tours. Too. Oh yeah. And I was really waiting for that to happen because it was going to be our, our opportunity to really present ourselves to the hip hop community, a big part of the hip hop community, man. Yeah. You know, so that's what, that's the part that I was looking forward to because I've always wanted to, uh, I've always wanted the hip hop community to embrace us if they only heard us and, you know, they don't really play fishbowl. It was always weird to me, you know, and, and being a, a, a fan from the beginning and, and even watching the, the, the documentary about fishbone, uh, you know, a few years ago, one of the things that, that, that I never really understood because in my mind, fishbone should have been the biggest fucking band in the world because they're just so goddamn good. But your record companies never really understood what to do with you, where to place you in stores, how to market you. And in spite of how great Fishbone was, and they were, it just seemed like Columbia was just clueless in how to take this incredibly talented band and find a way to put it in the middle of everything. And I've never under I've never understood how they could have botched something at so badly. Well, because first of all, man, they didn't. Uh, there are too many boundaries, genre boundaries, Did lots you- of genre. And when you have genre boundaries, at least you know that's why. And you know, I, I just don't think that that Sony, Sony was Columbia. They really considered the alternative market because you know you got all you have the alternative genre i remember when they, i remember when the word alternative the alternative genre didn't exist and then i remember when it did so the time that it didn't exist they probably felt like they couldn't categorize fishbone and that's what it is categorizing a band or yeah. an artist so if you categorize them well you gotta you know they're they're catering to a certain genre of music or fan base, but it makes them hard for them to spread out to any other ones because you got them, those walls of categorization there, keep keeping you from breaking through. So, and when you play a lot of different genres of music, it makes the record company hard to categorize you. Do you think that same thing exists today? Is it, is it, is there any, are, are those restrictions? Well, I'm sure, well, I'm sure it is, man. Sure it is. You know, I, you know, I've been so used to it happening. I'm just like, I just don't really wait on or depend on yeah. any record companies to really make the moves for me. And then it's nice. It's nice when they do. But uh, when they don't, you can't just sit there waiting for them to come and rescue you. You got to get up and, and do it yourself <laughs> by any means necessary. And that's what you're making your own category. Yeah. It's just one of those things where, you know, as a fan, you know, to have seen you guys play so many times and mop the floor, regardless of the size of the room, whether you were opening for somebody, whether someone was opening for you, you know, to me, a, a band that undeniably fantastic to, to have not gotten the love and support from your own record company. I, yeah, I just think it's just like a, sh- just, it's just a shameless thing because my God, every time I, every time I saw you guys and, it just kept getting better and better. I never saw a bad night. I probably saw you about 10, 12 times. I never saw you have a, an off night. And I'm sure there were plenty. But I, it, but you, you, you never disappointed well, me. Yeah, thank God for the underground culture, man, you know, where it's a lot of support in that, well, you know. Shit, me being in this, in this punk rock museum is, is just, and being able to do tours here, make a little dough is support right there. You know, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, because, you know, you've done a lot of stuff over the last uh, 12 months. One of the things that you had done, and, you know, this kind of lends a little bit into what we're talking about. You did this uh, benefit show for HR for uh, from Bad Brains. And, uh, you know, you and Norwood and I think, you know, Dave Lombardo from Slayer were involved in it. It just sounds like it, it was an amazing thing. And even even though, you know, HR has gone through some serious health issues, you know, Bad Brains was a very important, pivotal band. Tell me about those guys and, and, and about Bad Brains, because I think, you know, they kind of suffer the same, you know, the same issues that you guys did. I mean, you know, I mean, they were very much a hardcore band, but my God, they could do nearly 
anything. And you, tell me a little bit, a little bit about them and about that tribute. Well, I just feel like the bad brains. Is, well, you know, okay. So the the, the uh, tribute was to raise money for HR so that he can get his nervous system taken care of, his headaches. You know, he's got some kind of condition. And I mean, my bad brains. Well, they uh, hey, yeah, man. I really don't think that the bad brains were anywhere near mainstream or any anywhere close to it because they played two bipolar bipolar genres of music punk rock and reggae when would you ever think that you would hear <laughs> punk rock and reggae out of the same band right during the same show you know and then plus the majority of this stuff is punk rock and so it it had them in a certain genre of hell man it's a big old picture downstairs of hr in the museum that i would talk about Talk about the H, you know, the, the bad brains and stuff like that. A lot of their songs are Bible hymns too, man. Bible hymn type stuff. It's it's very spiritual stuff. Spiritual. Yeah, but you wouldn't think so when you listen to the music. Yeah, but if you read the lyrics, you say, "Oh, so that that's what he's saying. <laughs> that's what he's screaming yeah. about." But it's absolutely true. Yeah, I mean, they, they you know, obviously there was probably no mainstream possibilities for those guys. But I think for people that that got the exposure to bad brains, I think it opens up you know a lot of people's eyes to there's all these unwritten rules about who's supposed to play what and how and when and yeah you know, it, it, most of it's all you know bullshit of course but you know, you know bands like you and bands like like them I think opened up a lot of a lot of minds where you know when you realize these were great bands that there were no real restrictions as far as you know, whether race played a part and what was considered good music or bad music. It was just right. great music. Yeah, man, it's good music. And plus, you know, it's all about having fun. Shit, that's why people get together to do it anyway yeah. in the beginning before the money comes in or any of that type of stuff or whatever. But the politics of the contracts, yeah. you start out with fun and expression. With Fishbone, though, so, I mean, again, this is a band, you and Nor would have been, you know, kind of, you know, propping this thing up since 1979, and it's been through a lot of different changes. You know, last spring, you had uh, the EP with Fishbone, and Fat Mike, uh, you know, produced it, and, and in, right, the, in right. the middle of it, now he opens up a, 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 a museum. It had been nine years since there had been any recorded Fishbone music. To get in, 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 you know, back in a room with you, you say know, it was nine years, huh? Was it, was it nine years? It was a lot of years. God damn! It was, yeah, a, it was a lot of years. It, that's for sure. It was a lot of years. But to get back into a, a room with <laughs> with with uh, with, uh, with with Walt and with uh, with Chris uh, and uh, and and Norwood. I mean, what what did it feel like? Did it feel like just you know, kind of like a like a family reunion, or was it uh, or was it different? Yeah, it felt like a family reunion. You know, at first, you know. And I thought the EP was really, really good. I thought, you know, there's some great, some great tracks on there. I think, uh, you know, Mike did a good job. But, I mean, it was just great to hear you guys play. And it was great to hear Chris sing songs and and, and hear his yeah. songs in it, too. It was just, it was just a, as a fan, it's just a, a, well, a it's nice good to have every, it's, It was good to have everybody back and, uh, you know, creating together and, and playing music and making songs that everybody was digging, you know, and so we had a big batch to pick from, and we put it on there. Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's like so. The last time I talked to you, uh, oh, and I, nine I, years. Goddamn, I thought it was six. Okay. It's still a lot of years. Yeah, what? it's a lot of years. It, Fuck it. You yeah, know? It, I mean, it was just uh, maybe we were on some. Excuse me, while I overthink this type of shit. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> that's good. But during that time, I was working on my own stuff because it. Six, maybe seven years did go by, unfortunately, while we were overthinking everything. And while that was going on, I was definitely working on my stuff, man, because I don't like to take all that time. Yeah. That's the wife right there. Hello, Mrs. Moore. <laughs> he said, hello, Mrs. Moore. Oh, hello. Hello there. She said, hello there. Okay. Nice, <laughs> okay, nice to so meet I'll you. you back. So now I met the whole family. This is this is better than I thought it would be. Crazy, dude. <laughs> so it, you were crazy. So you were also part of this David Bowie uh, tour, also, and it had like a million people in it: Todd Rundgren and Jerry Harrison, yeah, Adrian did, Blue. Did, did, yeah, it was all yeah. Yeah how how was that? I mean, I got to channel David Bowie. 
I got to meet David Bowie through his music, performing his music and stuff like that. I got to work. I got to put on my different characters and paint my face and <laughs> wear crazy ass outfits. I'm always wearing some crazy ass outfits, but I got to really, I got to really go overboard when I was doing the Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you had the uh, the face makeup uh, when you were doing Ashes to Ashes, but you've done other David Bowie songs before. There's a couple of great videos on on YouTube of you doing like uh, Moon Age Daydream, which is just you did you did such a great job with that. But in in that tour, there's so many people involved in it. I mean, I mean, how was that? Was it was it just great to do it? Or I mean, are, are you a big Bowie fan to begin with? Uh, yeah, I like I like. You know, I, I mean, I didn't. I never listened to David Bowie constantly, but I would listen to him a lot. I remember times where I'd listen to David Bowie and I'd stop, and then I'd listen to him a lot again and I'd stop, you know. <laughs> so, and, you know, so when they wanted me to do the David Bowie uh, celebration, I was like, hell yeah, I do the Bowie. And that's what I called it, doing the Bowie. <laughs> and I got to do my interpretation of Bowie. That's cool. I went through this uh, this period where I wound up interviewing a bunch of people from uh, from from David Bowie's career, like you know Carlos Alomar and George Murray and all these great guys, you know Adrian Ballou. I mean, talked to all these guys, and it's like anyone that knew the guy just just loved him, and he was just like this this not only just not only a great musician and a great artist, but a real loyal individual to the people he. You talking about knew. Adrian Ballou? Yeah, yeah, man, Adrian's good. <laughs> Adrian's a good guy, man. Yeah, he is. A, a great, he's a good, he's he's pretty funny dude. Yeah, great guitar, <laughs> great guitar player. Yeah, too. he's badass guitar player. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, brand new stuff. Like we said, coming to uh, South uh, by Southwest in March. When is the new album? When are you expecting that to come out? Well, you talking about uh the compilation? I got it now. I will have it. I will have it when I get there. I got it now, man. I have the physical thing, and I and what? So look. What I've been working on is this thing called Dr. Mad Bob's Underground Contraband Railroad. <laughs> Look at this here. That's my suit. <laughs> that's my hat. So they got me up in here. That's my suit. That's my sash. I did at the work tour. <laughs> you know, this is some crazy. Yeah, they got like a crazy video playing. I don't know who the fuck that is. Yeah, man. So it's called Dr. Mad Bob's Underground Contraband Railroad. And, um, that consists of all of the stuff that I'm doing. Dr. Mad Bob and the Missing Links, the brand new step, my my body products. I got shea butter, I got shampoo, I got soap in them, <laughs> and I got a little body oil I'm putting together, man. You know, That's hey, great. what's going on? What's happening? Good to see you, boy. Good all right, good to see you. Good to see you. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, so. And so, and, 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 and that includes the brand new step, which are my, which are my thumb drive, my thumb drives with like all that music on it. And well, so that's going to be the release. And it's not a CD, but it's a thumb drive because, you know, a lot of people say, well, we don't have a CD player anymore. I'm like, okay, well, you can't get away from me that fast. Motherfucker. I got these <laughs> thumb drives you can get, but all the music on there, you know, and I got my website that I'm going to be, I got my website that I'm going to be selling it from too. Dude, after this whole thing is over, you got to give me your, um, your email address so I can send you some of my ads. You can send me whatever you want. I'll take it. Yeah, because I've been working on it on Final Cut Pro. Can't wait. Angel, I know, listen, I, I, I know you want to see the rest of the, uh, the museum. <laughs> oh, dude, it ain't even that. I got to get behind the wheel and drive back to L.A. Like fucking four. And then I got a rehearsal tonight. With the bass player, with the missing links, because I got to teach them some stuff, you know, for these these songs, these songs that we're going to break out, because we got a tour coming up February. We got a tour coming up February, man. Uh, the second, third, and fourth weekend of February, I believe. It's kind of like on the West Coast, little West Coast runs on the weekends, you know. And then, and that's the missing links. And then, and then March, that's when the brand new step does South by Southwest. And that, that whole weekend on that weekend from the 18th through to the what is it like the 24th or something? Yeah. Angela, I appreciate the time. I know you're in the middle of a bunch of different things, but it's great to talk to you again and uh, have a safe drive back. Oh yeah, for sure, man. It was good talking to you, man. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the whole thing. Appreciate it too. Thank you, Angelo. Be well. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Take care. All right. Peace. Bye. You can find the latest from Angelo on his website, brandnewstep.com. You can also keep tabs on what's going on with Fishbone 
on their website, fishbone.net. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like it, share it, rate it, and tell all your friends about it. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and on TikTok. And you can also email me at bags at rock102.com. I'd love to hear what you think. And thanks again for listening to Baxi's Musical Podcast. <laughs>